welcome everyone to today's um, IBEXA DXP 3.2 release webinar. Today we'll give you a demo of our new features, functionalities and capabilities that are in IBEXA DXP 3.2. It was released at the end of October. I'm Sue Kent, the Director of Content and Communications at IBEXA, and I have with me today the, the Director of Product Management, Sylvain Guitard, and Lars Eirik Röning, IBEX's VP of Customer Success. And just before I hand off to them, I'll cover a few housekeeping items. All participants have been muted to avoid background noise. At the end of the webinar, we'll open up the stage to questions. As we go through the presentation, please do write your questions in the Q&A box. And for anyone who needs to leave early, don't worry, we shall be uploading a recording of this webinar, which we'll share on our website. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Sylvain. Thank you so much, Sue. Thank you for joining us today on this uh, public webinar for this new version, the version 3.2 um, of uh, IBEXA. So just before uh, diving into uh, this um, this new release and those uh, new features that we are introducing today. Um, I wanted to just have a quick look at uh, what uh, 2020 has been for our uh, company. And I would like to focus on uh, version 3, Easy Platform version 3 that has been uh, re um, released in uh, April uh, 2020, beginning of April. It was our first uh, generation um, of uh, Easy Platform combining content, commerce, and personalization. So what we call the fully integrated DXP. And that was our first step. And a uh, few weeks after, uh, important step for Easy Systems, we rebranded uh, to IBEXA. IBEXA is the new name of the, of the company. I'm sure you are all aware. And we, you have seen uh, you know, over the last uh, months and weeks um, that we have rebranded all the online presence of uh, IBEXA, starting from the main website, but the documentation uh, also is, has been rebranded lately. In the summer, we have been releasing Easy Platform 3.1 with the integration, better integration of commerce. And uh, today, um, I have to announce that uh, Easy Platform is gone and uh, we are introducing a new product, IBEXA uh, DXP 3.2. And, um, and we will look into that today. Um, so what is IBEXA DXP and why IBEXA DXP? DXP stands for Digital Experience Platform. Uh, it is uh, uh, it is well known in the in the market now, but uh, um, basically what it means is that, and I, I use this slide as an example for your customer journey. In the customer journey, you will have multiple touch points with the with the customer, and you need a platform that is flexible enough to uh, deliver different digital experience along this journey. And from the interest at the beginning or awareness or interest and at some point evaluation and purchase. And after the purchase, you need a platform that is able to deliver um, solutions and, um, and content and uh, connection with the customer around service support, eventually repurchasing. And this is today what uh, this slide um, shows is that we need different components, the content engine, the website factory, personalization, the commerce to be able to deliver those uh, digital experiences and customer experiences. Today, those components uh, on IBEXA DXP are built on top of uh, application engine and this application engine, you know it, is very flexible and extensible because you can connect with all the MarTech solution, the commerce solution, or the business system that you can have, um, the ERP, the CRM, or um, eventually uh, bespoke apps or custom apps that you have built uh, for your business. Um, and if I go into more details for, um, for those uh, components, and we call that the five pillars of the digital experience platform, you need to be able to create content. We are coming from the, from the CMS uh, world and uh, we have uh, content has always been key for, for us. 
So we continue to deliver uh, content with, the, with this great platform. So you need able to deliver this content in different ways, including it less. And uh, Easy Platform has been good for this. Ibexa uh, DXP will be also good for this. Uh, building and managing website is very also important um, as, a, as a pillar. Content is, is good, but you need um, some uh, simple tools, um, efficient tools to assemble and manage website for your team. And, and potentially reuse content uh, if you have multi-site configuration and so on, and being able to reuse content and features or custom development that you have made for uh, those, uh, those websites, uh, improving the time to market. Uh, another pillar that is very, very important is the personalizing experiences. Obviously, uh, when you are a different stage of this uh, journey, if you are a customer, you don't need the same content. You need a personalized content. So it can be based also on the behavior or the channel. You can uh, maybe deliver a different content if you are on a mobile app than on the portal, if you have a portal. Um, the, the other pillar is uh, how to sell and buy online is, um, is important when you can mix content and commerce or blend content and commerce uh, to provide intuitive and streamlined buying experience for your customer. Obviously, if you want to increase your conversion uh, or your, your selling, uh, you need uh, to have a, a smooth experience, frictionless experience. And as you know, um, our platform is very uh, customizable and extensible. You have been playing with this uh, uh, the framework, but also um, the application engine for a long time. So you know that you can customize, you know that you, we are uh, providing extension points so you can connect with external tools. So Easy Platform had those uh, uh, five pillars for the digital experience platform, but we are really today moving to this uh, fully uh, integrated uh, DXP, and this is the digital experience uh, platform that we are building in with Easy Platform V3, but now uh, Ibexa 3.2. Um, so our customers and partners have been building uh, using the platform for a long time to uh, uh, address uh, business use cases. But today I wanted to focus on three of them that uh, we, we think that are most important and uh, the, the one that we see a lot on the, the market. The first one will be obviously building your digital brand and experience. Um, again, we are coming from, uh, from the CMS world. So we have been playing in this field for, for a long time with, the, uh, with content as, uh, as a key element where you can uh, digitize your, your content and everything to engage uh, your, uh, your audiences. Um, and one good example for this is when you have multi-site or when you have a, a company with uh, multiple brands, you need brand and, uh, consistency, your team needs to deliver um, those brands in the, uh, on the web and make sure that the, the brand is uh, it's consistent and deliver that in, and uh, in the multi-channel, so it's a it's very efficient way for uh, the, the the marketing team to to deliver those content. Um, the second element that uh, usually we see for some of the, the companies using our uh, product is to move from this digital, the first step, the digital uh, digitalized um, uh, brands and experiences, is to go to service portals. Um, those modern portals can be used for some companies, for distribution, resellers, suppliers, partners, you name it, uh, to provide those um, uh, customized experience with the, for, for the partners, for the resellers. Um, it's another step to uh, improve efficiency of the processes, uh, starting the sales enablement. You can imagine those portals with uh, a list of, uh, of quotes that you submitted or orders uh, in the past that are living outside um, your, your system, maybe in ERP or CRM. And it's a natural step uh, to the digital buying and selling. 
because um, this is natural. This is uh, uh, providing a customized experience for your uh, for your partners. Um, and obviously, the last step is the e-commerce that we see also in, uh, in our uh, customer portfolio. Uh, you have um, with uh, our commerce solution, uh, you can buy and sell online, obviously, but uh, you have additional capabilities um, more in the B2B world for reordering. Um, if you want to um, create those um, solution, it's completely possible when you, you will reorder uh, an item or a group of items. You will have the dynamic pricing that is connecting most of the time to an ERP where uh, partners or resellers might have different pricing. And obviously the last thing that we, that we see coming more and more is are the marketplaces, marketplaces where you can integrate with marketplaces or your platform can be a marketplace for, for others. And this is those uh, three uh, business use cases that I wanted to highlight today. And, and for this, obviously, um, one uh, product uh, is uh, not enough and not uh, one size fits all. I would like to hand it over to Lasharik um, and then we'll present uh, those uh, new products that we are introducing today. Thanks a lot, Tova. So um, as Tova said, uh, most of you have basically known the technical platform we had called Easy Platform Enterprise Edition. Um, with our kind of in the discussions with our customers today, we speak less about technical features and more about business use cases. This is also well aligned with what Tova presented. So based on this, we also want to offer specific products which are well understood by the market. So we know speaking about a technical platform is not the ideal way to explain what type of business requirements uh, we can meet and how we can help you with your digital journey. Um, so what we're doing today is basically introducing three products um, and it's in a way quite analogous to the way you work today when you uh, think about buying a car, you, you go to a manufacturer and, and they can have one application kind of engine uh, but you can realize these in different products. So the first product that we're uh, showing today is the Ibexa content. And Ibexa content is the one which will be a natural one for those with uh, content centric hubs and where content services are key. So uh, this is well aligned with any headless use case that you might have. And it's also uh, very powerful in the sense that it also comes with uh, editorial capabilities such as workflow. Uh, we'll look at the features a bit later. The next one is the Ibexa experience. Uh, Ibexa experience is, is the evolved version of Easy Platform, uh, but it now allows you to do even more. Um, as you've seen, we've introduced a number of very interesting things like Site Factory uh, and more pow uh, powerful capabilities with the page builder as well. And this is something which is uh, very, very attractive for the market. And we see this um, have a really nice uh, reception when we talk about how do we engage with different audiences. So if, if you're looking at building the relationship with your customers or any target audience, then this is a, a great one. The Ibexa Commerce is the last product we're offering. So this is for those uh, organizations where you want to go beyond content and engagement and want to conduct your business online. So if you're looking at automating your transactions or um, integrating with any kind of system that you might have in your organization, uh, this is uh, anything from CRM to ERP then the Ibexa Commerce is the, uh, the natural uh, offering that we have for you. What you'll see is that the application engine is the one which is the, the heart of all of these things, uh, but they come in different flavors as we, we see here. So yeah, next slide. So the Ibexa content uh, is of course uh, the, the production, uh, which I say basically the, the product which allows you to work with your content repository. And we have lots of clients who use this in headless modes or have other digital transformation uh, projects where they use 
Ibexa as a part of it, but not as the only uh, solution. For anyone who wants to deliver the, uh, the content you have to headless uh, scenarios, such as mobile apps or IoT devices, then this would be the natural uh, selection. Um, what you'll see is that we're also unifying product and content. So the Ibexa content has this, uh, whereas the Ibexa open source uh, does not have the collaboration and workflow, because I know that's probably one of the questions you might have. So the next one is Ibexa Experience. Um, and Ibexa Experience is the one which is natural for you if you still deliver a lot of the websites uh, and that you may also want to do a mix of, uh, of headless as well as the traditional web delivery. It also comes with, as you see, the page builder and the powerful web factory that we introduced. Um, and of course, the form builder uh, takes care of uh, all of the, the form submissions that you might want to build in. Integrating with uh, product, product catalogs as well as CRM is also part of what this uh, product offers. So the last one is the Ibexa Commerce, which of course builds upon the Ibexa content and experience. And as mentioned, it's there to, to kind of deliver the full um, digital experience if you want to do sales channels or any business transactions online. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see a number of the new things we're building here. Um, and with that, I think what is interesting for you is to understand as an existing customer, we also need to see how does this map to what you have today? And what I'm happy to say is that we've taken a, a quite a simple path on this. So for any existing customer, you will be free to decide on going with either Ibexa content or Ibexa experience. Um, if you also have easy commerce that we introduced before, you will automatically um, have the right to run Ibexa commerce. So what is important for us is to, is to stress the fact that this is all a modularized uh, platform. So if you start off with content and you later see you have needs to, uh, for instance, add the page builder because you want to do a hybrid scenario, which we have great examples of today, then this is something you can do without necessarily uh, having to think about adding a new team that uh, sets up a new product because all of these are modules. So think about this in a way that you can start from Ibexa content if you want to, and then you can go to Ibexa experience. Uh, for many customers, you may uh, go with Ibexa experience and it will solve everything for you. But uh, regardless, these are all key kind of modules uh, which you will be able to add without any um, further technical complication. So I think with that, we will pass it on to uh, Sylvain for the demo. Excellent, thank you, Lars. Um, yes, the installation should be easy <laughs> and moving from one product to another will be even more easier in the, in the future. But uh, let's talk now about this, uh, this release. You are here for <laughs> listen about uh, the new features. So let's have a look at the, at the new features. Um, and I wanted to start with Maison. Maison is our new demo site. Um, Maison is um, an example. It's a, it's a fake company. It's not. <laughs> so don't try to buy online. You will not get uh, furniture. But, uh, uh, the idea is um, uh, that Maison is, um, was selling in the, the history of Maison. It's a manufacturer, furniture manufacturer, and they were selling their product through uh, resellers. Um, and, uh, and lately, they wanted to diversify their way of selling. And they started to explore different ways. Um, and they were successful on this. And they used for this Ibexa Commerce, so the full package, but uh, um, Lars showed you a few slides uh, in, the, in the previous slides. So they have the, their B2B program. This is if you want to be a, a reseller and a, a shop online and have, uh, so we have an example of a reseller portal. I will not show that today, but uh, 
if you if you want, feel free to ask us. We will show you uh, the, uh, how we build the reseller portal. Uh, they have also a list of uh, professionals, professionals that can recommend products. Uh, so, for instance, designers or uh, architects that can uh, recommend products from Amazon. And lately, uh, thanks to Ibex uh, Commerce, they were able to sell online. And um, on this website, on this demo website, you will see that they structure their content based on um, rooms um, here, outdoor. So you will have uh, different products for outdoor, the picnic table. So you can buy those products online directly, add to cart and so on. So that's... Um, those basic uh, capabilities, but they, um, they, they, they completely check uh, the advantage of um, Ibex DXP. that is uh, when you want to mix content and commerce because they are very engaging content, rich text, uh, rich content with uh, some uh, um, beautiful images and, uh, and this, so they can mix um, and promote their content directly on those uh, inspiration pages or on those uh, blog post pages. So that's just the background of what is Maison uh, taking full advantage of uh, Ibexa uh, DXP. And for this, uh, how does it work? And I will uh, jump into uh, the backend for this. This is uh, the back end of Ibexa DXP uh, 3.2. I'm, um, I'm, I'm a marketer and I will uh, show you how I use the platform uh, and how I use Ibexa DXP to uh, uh, give like those uh, uh, advanced uh, customer experience. So the first thing that you will notice is that um, Easy platform is gone, as I said in my first slide, and we are introducing Ibexa. So um, the colors have changed. The new, uh, you will have a new look and feel of this uh, of this uh, product. So Ibexa is here. This is something that uh, uh, you can replace. Uh, you know that some partners are already replacing the same way that you can customize. But to, those are the new colors of the of the product. The redesign that we did so. It's just a look and feel. There is no change in the overall experience. The way that you create, edit, and publish content is exactly the same. So you will find the content tree again. You will find those buttons to uh, create, edit, and move content. However, we took this uh, redesign uh, task as um, we considered it as an opportunity and we simplified a few things. And the first one is this, uh, this view, the content item view with um, uh, all the fields. And we know that some of our partners and customers, they have um, a lot of fields in some, uh, in some content types. So here you have a more compact view, so less scroll um, and a cleaner and slicker view. Um, another thing that you will notice on this, uh, on this new design is the sub items. Sub items is very, uh, so, same as the content tree. Those are the two components that our uh, editors are using a lot. It's, um, uh, it's part of, uh, of this uh, experience, new experience. Sub items uh, now has a first column that is uh, sticky. So as soon as you horizontal scroll, because you have a lot of information uh, here, you can activate and deactivate this, but uh, basically um, you can horizontal scroll and keep the first column that is uh, uh, sticky. And it's great for, for editors, so you don't lose uh, the information. So for B2B program, I will have like uh, some custom remote ID here. Um, and this overall experience is changing. It's changing uh, on all the screens, not on, only on these screens. And for this, I will show you that uh, even uh, Page Builder has changed a little bit. The colors, so you will see. So I'm on Page Builder. This is available on Ibexa um, Experience. Ibexa Experience um, gives you the ability to build website and so on. So you will, you will see. Um, that uh, you have the, um, the timeline for scheduling content. It's exactly the same. The blocks are still here. 
um, same experience. Um, one on um, the first really important feature I'm really proud of is the, the targeting. The targeting block that we are uh, introducing out of the box in, um, in IBEXA DXP 3.2. So targeting block is what I was talking about, like personalizing the customer experience. Um, and you will see that the targeting block is using um, different fields to map uh, content and segments. So I have defined some segments and the idea is like for all the visitors who went to outdoor products, I will select a content that is relevant for them. This is the new universal discovery widget, you know it, um, but I will select um, outdoor products. And for this, I can switch from a uh, tree view uh, here or uh, the grid view. And the grid view helps me to uh, pre-select uh, this. So I will select uh, patio two seater so far for the people or the visitors who went to outdoor pages. And here the same for people who visited the home office products. I will select so it can be an inspiration page, but it can so also be a product. And that's why I'm selecting those products. Oops, went too fast. Um, I'm selecting those products so they can um, select, um, uh, promote some, uh, some items and the marketer can highlight and promote content that is relevant for, for this person. Um, in case of there is no match, I will then go to uh, the dining and I will select um, this uh, chair that is the default content. If uh, I'm a logged in user and I don't, uh, uh, I didn't visit the outdoor or home office pages, then I will get this dining chair. And I will, uh, get this, so I will publish it. And, and you will see that on the home page, so I'm going back to my home page here on the front end website, and you will see that um, um, I'm not logged in. I see the Isla uh, chair. So here again, I mix content and commerce, so I can promote my, my product directly on the, on the home page and mix. Um, uh, rich content with, uh, with products. But if I logged in as Francis, uh, Francis is a um, user, a returning customer, and he has uh, visited the outdoor pages, uh, then Francis will get this. Um, it's automatic, I'm logged in as Francis, and uh, you don't have anything else to do. How does it work? Because this is nice, but how does it work? So we integrated for this uh, with uh, external tool that is uh, uh, um, customer.io. Customer.io, it's just to illustrate, this is not, this is a custom integration. This is not coming into the product. It's just to illustrate what is possible with this new version. So um, thanks to Bertrand Dunogier who helped me to set up this uh, instance uh, and uh, this uh, connection he created using the segmentation API that we have in 3.2, um, um, a connector with um, uh, customer.io. And what we have been doing is like, uh, yeah, you can edit the conditions, but uh, you, you can really build segments with people who visited these pages will belong to this. Uh, segment. So very simple integration on our side and then after every logged in user will get, uh, will be assigned to a segment based on this activity. And how does it work? Uh, where is the connection? The connection is actually in the admin, in the admin panel. So if you go to admin and segments, you will see that you can create segments or connect with external segments. Um, so in that case, uh, this is connected with customer.io uh, external tool, but you can definitely create um, your segment groups and segments if you don't have this uh, 
uh, third-party solution and if you prefer to manage everything on the website, this is completely possible. We have an API for that, the segmentation API that will allow you to create groups, uh, segment groups and uh, segments. So it's up to you. We, as, you, as I said before, this is something that uh, we have been doing for a long time, the um, extension points, and this is available in Ibexa um, experience uh, 3.2. That's, um, I hope it's, it's clear. If you want to know more about this, uh, our um, senior developer advocate wrote a great blog post about the new personalization and Ibexa DXP using segmentation uh, API. So I really encourage you to look at it. Uh, if you want to know more, there are some uh, documentation obviously, but uh, feel free to, to, to read this. Um, so the, um, the segmentation API is available for, uh, and, and out of the box, you will get the, the targeting block. But uh, Bertrand Dunoger is, went further when he did this, uh, this integration and he, he, he did a custom tag. So if some of you are familiar with this, uh, uh, with this component, it's the simple way uh, to uh, enrich your, uh, your text with uh, custom integration. And I will show you how it works today. So this is not available in the, out of the box in the product, but it's very, very simple to do. So again, it's just to show you what you can do with this, uh, with this platform and uh, possibilities are endless. Uh, for this, I will use the personalized item and I will, and you see that all those um, segments were defined in customer.io. Uh, so if I have local segment, I will see my local segments. But uh, here, um, I take an outdoor product and, and for this, I will switch here and add, uh, I will embed, a, again, I will embed a product directly mixing content and commerce to engage more with your uh, customer. So here it's for outdoor. So uh, again, I will uh, promote the Passio uh, three seater so far. And if I click on preview, you will see again, a very simple way to uh, here as the as a logged in user, I will be able to see that only if I belong to this segment. So that's a very nice way also to mix content and commerce and provide this personalized experience. Let me continue on this. And this is great because I'm on the top of the page here. And um, something that you might have noticed is the autosave. Autosave is coming in 3.2, is available in 3.2. I'm very excited about that because uh, we have heard a lot of uh, marketers, editors struggling with the, the, the previous versions where they were losing content. So now you don't have to worry too much about this. The system will automatically save uh, your, your draft or your content. And this is possible because in the previous version, we um, had um, the uh, save incomplete draft feature. Um, so it's now uh, possible for us to do the auto save. So it's configure, something that you can configure in your user profile and uh, you can activate or deactivate it and also uh, change the, the settings. And here we are, um, the system has automatically saved and giving you the date when uh, was the last time it was saved. Um, I hope um, now uh, people will really um, uh, enjoy this and uh, I'm sure they will be excited to see the next uh, great feature is about the DAM connector framework that we have introduced in, in this um, uh, in this new version. So what is DAM? DAM is a digital asset management. This is um, some of our customers are using Binder, Wedia. Uh, those are the, the, the leaders. Um, and basically they store all their assets on those, um, on those platforms. So they want to be able to connect, to select images or content from uh, those external platforms. 
And as an editor, I can now, if I have it configured, I have the select from DAM button on this image as a field type. It's a lot about the connectivity. So we are introducing, this is our first um, connector framework that we are introducing, the digital asset management connector framework. What does it do? It's an extra additional layer um, that will simplify the connection between external solution and our Ibexa uh, DXP. And especially for the, uh, those cases with, uh, with images. And uh, to illustrate this, we uh, used Unsplash. Unsplash, I'm sure you all know what is Unsplash. It's the royalty-free uh, image uh, resource that you can um, download or uh, use for your, for your content. This is not what uh, exactly can be uh, digital asset management, but it's using the same approach and the same uh, kind of technology. And so this is an example. So if you want to uh, be inspired by, by this and let's see how we built it, this is available for you as a Ibexa customer. Uh, the first thing that you will notice when you connect with a dam is like we have a tab system. So if you have one, multiple dams, if you want Unsplash, uh, Wedia and Binder, um, because um, maybe it's possible and you have a multi-site configuration and your German team is using a different dam, this is completely uh, possible. But for the purpose of the demo, I just use uh, Unsplash. Unsplash, so here it's about a patio, so I will uh, search for a patio on Unsplash. Uh, I can uh, refine my search with defining the orientation, but uh, again, this is just an example I can uh, maybe you have a uh, uh, filter by user, filter by size, so all this in the, in the future, uh, if you want a better or uh, more fine tuned integration. And if I click on search, this will uh, refine the search and I will select this image. And automatically my content, my blog post will have a link to this uh, external assets. It will not be uh, downloaded, it will be uh, linked, hot linked to uh, my uh, instance, right? So if I publish it, uh, that will be directly available on the, um, on the blog post. And uh, I can show you that I, I go to blog. I will get um, my new uh, blog post with the new image. So again, the image is not uh, downloaded. The image is not replaced. It's uh, completely linked to uh, this external option. And I'm, uh, I'm still I'm logged in as Francis. So you will see that uh, I'm Francis and I have my uh, Patio three seater sofa that is available and I can add to the cart. So, this is a, a great example of uh, Ibexa um, connector framework that we want to build in the, in the future. Uh, with, uh, we'll provide more and more connector frameworks um, in, the, in the future. And the DAM digital asset management was our first uh, example, our first element. Um, and I wanted to talk now because I'm on the, the blog post uh, on the blog page. Um, so I wanted to spend some time on, um, on the search. And you all know that um, we have uh, spent a lot of effort and the engineering team has been working very hard for um, search lately. We have introduced in uh, 3.1 uh, elastic search support for our products. So now uh, um, Ibexa DXP customers can take advantage of uh, elastic search support. Um, we have also customers running on solar. This is still available. And this is um, something it's up to you to configure if you if you don't know, uh, if you don't, didn't see it, I really encourage you to look at the previous webinar on 3.1 at the switch from 
Solar to Elastic is very simple. It's just a matter of configuration and indexation of content. Um, but we knew that that was not enough and uh, we continue to spend um, resources and energy on, on the search to provide um, better, better search. Um, so the, we continue the integration of uh, Elasticsearch on, uh, on our product and uh, moving on, we'll, um, we provide a better uh, support for uh, the commerce part, but that was not enough. Uh, we did also um, the support for uh, better faceting, better facets. Uh, we know that in the previous version there was not um, we had a lot of requests for uh, providing more facets, and we are coming today with aggregation API. Aggregation API will allow you to um, have a better search capabilities, uh, meaning that uh, this kind of rendering has been made by uh, using aggregation API. So technically what's, uh, what's happening, it's, um, Every blog post has a keyword, and this keyword is used to uh, create those keywords. Or these keywords are used to uh, build this um, this stack cloud. And the number that you see are the number of items that are using this um, this keyword. So. This is possible with aggregation API. It's at the field level, so you can uh, have a better granularity on those uh, facets. This is just a simple integration I wanted to, to show you. Um, the other thing that uh, we, we did is also based on the content types that we have here. I have like, I did a search with Spacio. So I have the inspiration that is a type of content, product is another type of content and blog post is another type of content. So if I click on product, I can refine my search and only display uh, products. So we have a lot of uh, aggregation that are uh, possible and you can combine with external sources. And for this, I really encourage you to look at this uh, blog post that is, was a feature preview with the aggregation API. Um, this is well written and uh, well explained. Uh, you have different type of aggregation, the term range and stat aggregation. Um, and you can uh, combine those. You have the content and location aggregation. So uh, you have also examples. Definitely have a look on this. Um, that's, uh, that's basically the, the name is a new feature preview aggregation API for 3.2. Um, before, before taking the questions and, uh, and potentially uh, answering this question and answering this question, I wanted to uh, give you an update on one of the great feature that we had introduced in 3.0, it's Site Factory. So Site Factory has been introduced in 3.0 with um, the Site Factory allows um, developer, um, developers to configure predefined website, but uh, uh, when, as soon as it's predefined, uh, marketers and the team can uh, create website in, in few clicks. So um, just um, create this new site and this becomes available in the site list uh, that you can see here. Uh, you click on the plus and you will get a new interface to create a new site very quickly. In our example, it's a resale site. In 3.1, uh, we have introduced uh, what we call the site skeleton. So every uh, site that you define in the site factory can get a basic content architecture, more, more or less complex depending on your needs, but you can get those uh, structure, uh, reseller uh, home with the contact page, the furniture, the store pages. So very simple. And this part of the content, um, I mean, this site skeleton will be copied over the content, uh, content structure page at the specific location. Um, we had some uh, feedback from uh, our customers and they, they wanted to go even further on this. And one of the painful thing to, to, to do is uh, 
creating user groups and associate permissions with those uh, user groups. And when you define site skeleton now on 3.2, you can also define um, a group of uh, users that you want to copy other users, uh, admin slash users here. And you can obviously associate those uh, user groups with roles. Uh, here I put uh, anonymous, but editors will get the editor role and that will save me so much time when I will set up a new uh, website. So I will not need um, someone from uh, um, the, the IT team or someone that is responsible of the admin section to give me the right rights to the right group. So, and this is really possible uh, thanks to our technology and you can uh, just click on the plus as I showed you before, you click on the plus and you will get here uh, the site skeleton option. Generate site using site skeleton, you will copy the uh, content, but also copy uh, the users. And then from there, it's just a starting point. From there, you can edit content, create ad locations to users, so they are able to uh, manage those, uh, those websites. Um, I want, so that's uh, one element that I um, wanted to talk about for uh, Site Factory. The other element that is very, very important, um, and I'm sure a lot of people using Site Factory or that will use Site Factory will be happy to, will be happy to know that, is that in the past, we only had the domain uh, that was uh, possible. So here is an example. Um, and it was not possible to combine with the, with the past, the domain and the past. And now it's possible with uh, 3.2, so you can combine a domain and a past. And uh, one of the examples, I will use two examples for this. So I will, maybe your main site is in English and when you have a multi-language website and if you want to use Site Factory, um, I will use the same domain and I will slash, uh, put a slash DE and add a language that is German. So that way, the same site uh, will then be uh, English website, sharing the same content structure, English and German website. And it's endless. I can create also another um, site with for another language, um, depending on my strategy. So this is one example. The other example is when you want to have um, a website, um, you want to have the same domain for all the websites. Here it's like a specific domain, specific domains for resellers. But if you want all your uh, event sites to be on the same main domain, then you can maybe do uh, my domain slash uh, and a different type of uh, um, event 2020 or something like that. So having a specific path in the, in, in the URL. So that concludes the, the tour of, um, of this uh, 3.2 uh, feature. So I just want to switch back to my slides before uh, giving you more details. So um, here is like a quick summary of what uh, IBEX ADXP 3.2 is, unification of the platform. Again, we are moving to put like everything under the same hood, same technology. Site Factory has been improved. We continue step by step, but we deliver every release a little bit more. Segmentation API is also uh, coming with the profiling block or targeting block. Uh, some of you know the profiling block, it's now targeting block, the auto save. The DAM connector framework, our first framework for uh, digital asset management, but uh, more to come. And an example with the Unsplash connector. Aggregation API is also uh, available to improve your search. So this is um, a summary of uh, 3.2. You have more, I forgot to show you, you have more on, on, sorry, here on the product launch introducing Ibexa uh, 3.2. If you want to have an overview of the product, go there, uh, everything is explained. You can take your time reading and uh, seeing all the examples that we used. Um, 
quick update on the release cycle. So 3.2 has been released. Uh, we plan to release 3.3 LTS beginning of January um, after, after, after Christmas, after I mean, next year. So that's, um, that's the plan. And, uh, and we'll see in the future for the next major version. So the next one is about, it uh, will be a long-term support uh, that we'll see uh, happening. Image editor, long awaited feature for uh, some editors, but um, really, really something that I um, really want to see is the new personalization admin interface that is coming into the product. In the future, the next major version will be about connectivity. Connectivity is key. We have uh, started with the DAM connector framework, but we'll continue uh, CRM, ERP, we'll, we'll, we'll do more and not only for zero, but uh, that will be our connected DXP version four will be our connected DXP. We'll explore some, um, um, we'll uh, provide some subscription management, but uh, continue and, and enhance uh, page builder and site factory to deliver always. Deliver faster, be efficient, time to market is key. It's one of the main capabilities, so uh, we'll uh, uh, progress on, on, this, uh, on this part. Uh, make some improvements and enhancement. I continue to, I see it over and over, it's a customer driven and dynamic roadmap. So uh, if you want to see something happening in the product to go to uh, our product board, uh, you will have a link at the, at the end, but uh, you can completely, um, put um, your content, um, your recommendation or your request here. Um, and we'll come back to you if we have more questions. And this is time for questions. Thanks very much, Sylvain and Lars Eric. Um, we've got a few questions, so I'll just put them out there. Um, the first one says, can I upgrade from EZ Platform 2.5 to Ibexa DXP 3.2 directly? Um, mm, I don't think you can do it directly because um, the most important thing with this upgrade is changing Symfony uh, framework and it's um, easy platform um, version two was using Symfony three. So you will need to do a migration to Symfony five that is uh, our uh, framework. So. Uh, it implies change on the content structure. There are some deprecation. We have a few deprecation uh, also, but um, it's uh, this requires um, a little bit of work. Okay. Can we do the same things with Elasticsearch that we can do with Solar? So you can do pretty much the same. It depends on the, again, uh, depends. Depends on the, um, on what you need. Um, in the previous webinar, what the conclusion was um, in, in 3.1, uh, the conclusion was depends on what do you have. And if you have a lot of external data and you want to uh, index those data, maybe Elastic is better. In terms of performances, it's pretty much the same. So um, it really depends on the context. Um, but yes, basically, uh, the aggregation API, you will have the same possibility. Uh, so it's covering solar and elastic. It's really also about a matter of preference if you prefer to work on elastic, because I know that elastic search is uh, something that uh, developers really like. So yes, it's something that uh, you, you can do with, uh, with Elastic, but, uh, and you will go with Elastic because of this, but mostly uh, the same thing. Okay. Um, another question is, is it possible to select single or multiple DAM images in the rich text? Um, can you repeat the question? Is it like multiple DAMs? Yes, multiple DAM, in, in, well, I've got, is it possible to select single or multiple DAM images in the rich text? So in this example, I just did with Unsplash, but uh, uh, we have plan extension points. So you will be able in the future to connect uh, to multiple DAMs. Um, so this is possible, um, but uh, maybe your specific case can, uh, I, I'm not aware of your specific case, but uh, 
Yes, we have extension points and you can configure uh, our dam connector to connect. Uh, so you I will need to build to... different connectors to those dams. So if you have WebDR and Binder, you will need to build a Binder connector and a, um, a WebDR connector. Okay, um, the next question of course is, is there a list of planned dam connectors that will be developed? Uh, not, not, not in the roadmap yet. Uh, we don't have uh, dams uh, connector plans, but uh, it's clear that we need to uh, in the in the next version, the version four. It's clear that we uh, need to provide more connectors to again speed up the development of uh, of things. Okay, and lastly, is auto save a default feature? Autosave is a default feature. It's available and uh, I can show you um, as soon as you upgrade to uh, version um, 3.2, uh, you will go to your user settings and it will be activated by default and uh, enabled by default. So autosave draft is uh, enabled and uh, intervals are defined here. So you can, um, by just upgrading, you will get it. Great. Uh, oh, I've got a couple more. Um, will there be a few how-tos with a step-by-step -step manual for new things? Mm, uh, for, for new things. For, for the new things that you've shown today. Um, yes, uh, personalization, for instance, personalization, you have the step-by-steps here. I mean, or, or examples. Uh, but the documentation, um, maybe the documentation will uh, improve. We'll have to check on, on the documentation. I'm not sure that everything has been integrated in the documentation, but uh, mostly the blog post, we try to show the blog post how to get things uh, done. And uh, here, those are examples, so yeah. Great. Okay, I think that's uh, just tied up. I think there's just one last one. You haven't really mentioned the cloud much. Can you confirm when IB IBEX or DXB will be available in the cloud? And actually it is, it is already available. Um, it's available. This website is currently running on uh, IBEX Cloud and it's not uh, easy platform cloud, it's IBEX Cloud now and uh, completely compatible. Okay. And Sue, we'll all also actually have a couple of customers who are about to, to launch on version 3 or IBEX or DXP uh, on the cloud. So uh, we know the proof is in the pudding here. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you very much, everyone. Oh, um, there is a last question. Will there be a fully integration for new IBEX for Calliope migration with all the features? Ah, well done. Um, I have some good news. I don't know if it's good news, um, but we'll... Uh, the next version will also get um, our uh, delegated tool for migration. So where everything will be uh, supported. So we have a and good I, news I also coming. I can add to that, Sula, that we're in the process of actually looking at some big, big uh, installations. So to make sure that we can match most of those requirements uh, and we'll see uh, whenever we'll be up to kind of future parity, but we know that we have uh, the, the basic things are already in place and we're working on adding the new ones. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks Good. very much. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. So, um, that just about wraps up today's session. Thank you everyone for attending and for some great questions. Um, just before we go, a quick reminder, we love your feedback. So if you have further questions from today's demonstration, or any feedback about what you'd like to see in IBEX or DXP, you can reach the product team by the email you see here, or else you can go to the product roadmap, the URL is right here, and submit your comments and requests. Once again, on behalf of the whole team here, thank you very much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time. And in the meantime, stay safe.